This is your News Source Evening Bulletin for today, Monday, the 17th day of February in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. The popular Sashi General and Variety Store on Regent Street was gutted by fire early this morning. The cause of the fire is unknown, but quick action by the Ghana Fire Service contained the blaze to the one building in the busy Regent Street shopping district. New source understands that although the business was bought over by Chinese nationals last year, the building was still owned by a Guyanese family. The building owner and the Chinese operators all arrived at the scene, but would offer no comment. The fire appeared to have started from inside the building, and an alarm was raised by persons in the area. Fire officials were called to the scene around 3 o'clock this morning and immediately went into action, bringing out a number of fire tenders, including one with an elevated platform to douse the fire from above. It took the fire service just over an hour to completely contain the blaze and extinguish it. An investigation has been launched to ascertain the cause for the blaze. More news coming up in a moment. GBTI is your Guyanese bank. A bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Focus. Because the road brand new, the school brand new, the street like the culvert, the bridge done do, got the government too. Hey, the man I could really let you know. Masa, we get some first degree. That's a lie. You know. You say your family left your money. We know there's a lie. But y'all hear this one here now. The man said, how oh, we give we 20,000 out flats in Linden. What? Hey, are you from Linden? There's a blatant lie. Well, you say you open back the estate. <laughs> well, that's a sweet lie. Yo, so what if I say that though? If you here, you do nothing in four years? Watch. You ask me if the sun is by here, fan. He ain't no leader, no. You're right. That man is not a leader. That man is a liar. I like me up like come out this place, boy. That was a paid political ad. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing that he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the disciplined services, connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer, engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on elections day, a duly appointed candidate at the election, and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on election day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated 
incapacitated can also vote by proxy. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from the returning officer for the electoral district in which the application is being made from the 14th to the 21st of February 2020. Applications must be submitted to the returning officer no later than the 21st of February 2020. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779 or 223-9653. Visit the GCOM website at gcom.org.gy, email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit the nearest GCOM office. Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. Welcome back. The People's Progressive Party's civic returned to the Burbies region yesterday with a rally at the Bath Settlement. It was one of the largest rallies hosted by the party since the campaign season started. In rallying his supporters, presidential candidate Irfan Ali told residents of the agriculture community that a government under his watch will reduce the costs attached to leasing land for agriculture purposes. This region, this region has tremendous potential for livestock farming, but you cannot realize that potential now. You know why? Because the land rent, the land rent and land charges is driving people out of agriculture. You cannot afford it. On March 2nd, we have to reverse all those increases and give back the land to the people. Give you back your title. Mr. Ali also spoke about the fishing sector, pointing out that a PP civic government would make major investments in the area of security that would make the high seas safer for fishermen. He said the upcoming elections should and must be seen as very serious and should therefore not be taken for granted. We have in a very important sector, the fishery sector. We have seen our folks in the fishery sector face with many difficulties. Not only are they faced with a security threat when they go out there to apply their trade, but the taxes on equipment, the taxes on equipment and recapitalizing themselves is so much that their cost of operation is increasing. That is why on March the 2nd, we will be voting to support the revitalization and the re-energy of the fishing sector here in Region 5. Ali's running mate, retired Brigadier Mark Phillips, also focused his speech on the security sector and told residents that his experience in the security sector would see him being in a better position to address Guyana's security concerns. Mr. Phillips said it is time for the incumbent president, David Granger, to head into retirement. But I am the younger brigadier and I'm not going to fight with no older brigadier. The older brigadier had his chance. This is our time, the PPPC time. This is the time for me to become the prime minister and support the next president, Dr. Irfan Ali in the development of Guyana. Phillips said the PP Civics record in government speaks for itself and voters should pay attention to that record when they head to the polls. Phillips retired as head of the Guyana Defense Force in 2016 after serving the force for almost 40 years. Well, the only son of late presidents Dr. Chedi Jagan and Jenna Jagan joined the campaign trail on Saturday for the APNU AFC. Well-known dental surgeon and political commentator Dr. Chetty Jagan Jr. was in Letem with a coalition on Saturday night, encouraging citizens of Letem and the rest of Guyana to throw their support behind the incumbent David Granger. We are faced with life today and what do we have? We have a choice. You got a choice, Mr. Granger or Mr. Ali Frontman. But you're looking at Mr. Alius front man, you're looking at back man too. Back man, Mr. Jack, it's too present, they want to give me. 
We don't want two president. We got one and we got a very good one. Dr. Jagan said Ghana's future is bright with the oil sector and the sector needs proper management to move it forward. And he believes that management will be best under the incumbent president. Mr. Granger got to have respect. He fight cancer and beat it and thank God. Thank God for the Cuban doctors. Thank you, Cuba, for what you did for us. Because Mr. Granger beat cancer, and if you can beat cancer, you can beat the PPP. Guarantee you that. Meanwhile, President Granger also encouraged the citizens of the Rupununi region to throw their support behind the APNU AFC coalition. The president said there has been widespread development all across the Rupununi region and the town of Letem over the past years, and that development work must continue. We are going to convert the promises that have been made into performance. We are going to convert the potential of this great region into production. We are to convert the villages which are languishing in poverty into villages which are enjoying prosperity. That is why on the first day of this year, I declared a decade of development. On the issue of the oil and gas sector, the president also announced that cash advances will be made available to school children under his government, with particular conditions in place to ensure their regular attendance at school. But this will be a reward to parents who keep their children in school. If parents could show that their child, their children, have a high attendance record, they'll be paid for every day that child goes to school, up to the age of 15. So we're not paying for 35-year-old children, only 15 year old. And we have a public education scholarship program. Mr. Granger also said his decade of development plan will cater for communities and towns like Letem, and all citizens stand to benefit. In the world of business, the government's holding company, Nissil, will this week join another group of investors to turn the sod at Ogle for the construction of a sprawling hotel complex, which will include the Hilton Hotel. Just last week, the sod was turned for another Marriott Hotel to be constructed at Ogle. In a statement over the weekend, Nissil said the Caribbean Marketing Enterprise Incorporated has secured 20 acres of land at Ogle for the new hotel project which will see the construction of two branded hotels uniquely positioned in a complex driven by solar power. The hotels will have between 120 and 130 rooms, and there will also be a miniature golf course and clubhouse attached. It is a major project that will see the hiring of hundreds of persons, according to Nissel. In the education sector, the Georgetown Department of Education today opened an exhibition for transition students. The event is being hosted at the New Camberville Secondary School and allows a peek into the work that transition schools are involved in. District Education Officer Sherwin Blackman explained the idea to host the exhibition and that it forms part of the Education Department's Jubilee Observances. This exhibition is part of the Department of Education activities as we celebrate Guyana at 50. The idea, of course, which was birthed some months ago, provides a space for our transition students of the present year, from the present, from the particular schools, to be able to display work that they would have done over the period thus far. The training manager at the Bertram Collins College of Public Service, Donna Chapman, noted that there is a greater need for the revitalization of the transition program for those students who may not have done as well at their common entrance exams. As an educator now looking in at what is happening in the Ministry of Education, I've witnessed new life injected into the transition classes. Because from Mr. Blackmon's presentation, you would have heard that transition classes were around for a long time. But sometimes it looked like if it went into a state of coma. It's no longer that feeling when you look around and you hear what is happening in those schools that are doing transition work. But I wish to urge you to trace the performance of your students when they enter into the CSEC program. Link with that group of teachers in the CSEC program 
to get a greater insight into the impact your program is making. Teachers, you must take it to another level and become researchers as you progress in your profession. Use the information derived from derived for an improved and effective curriculum. The transition program, which began in 2010, is designed for students who wrote the National Grade 6 assessment and did not attain the marks to enter a mainstream secondary school. Subjects taught in the transition class are mathematics, grammar, composition, comprehension, spelling, reading, vocabulary, phonics, social studies, art and craft, physical education, and poetry. The new Camerville Secondary School, Cummings Lodge Secondary, Houston Secondary, St. George's High School, Queenstown School, Lodge Secondary School, and Tuckville Secondary School are the schools with transition classes. Well before a large crowd at Durban Park, Soka star Jumo Primo traveled his way to the 592 Soka Monarch Crown early on Sunday morning, making it the fourth time that he has won the competition. During his performance, Jumo appeared on stage in a wheelchair for healing as real-life pastor and gospel singer Kester D ministered to the audience and commanded Jumo to rise up, be healed and go forward and trample them. From there on, Jumo threw aside his crutches and danced and sang his way to the Soka Monarch Crown. And Jumo spoke to new source this afternoon about winning the monarchy for the fourth time. You know, a lot of people go through struggles, a lot of people go through fight down. You start up a little business, your best friend we is feed every day, always fighting you. You understand? You, 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 you're now trying to you, you get a position in work, you got the qualifications, you work for it, they want to scandal you. So a lot of people go through these situations, even sick people. You know, when some people sick, you know, people keep telling them, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Or if you, you know, you, 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 you're physically challenged, people want to hold you down and these kind of things. So these are some of the things that inspired this song and what I went through last year when I got food position, right? Um, the amount of things that happened when I got food, food position last year, um, the ban, mistake with the ban, the steel pan wasn't, wasn't mic'd up and uh, I lose a lot of time and I had to start over. So it's a lot of things. So the day after Soko Monarch last year, I wrote the song because the inspiration came right there. I just put what I felt into people. Placing second for a second year in the competition was reigning Chutney Monarch Stephen Ramphill, whose song The Same left him in the same position like last year. Ramphill pulled off a good performance and had the crowd support as he sang his love and unity theme in his tribute to Soka. Vanilla Play stirred with her tribute to 592. The Soka Monarch walked away with a $2 million check, compliments of the government of Guyana and Ansem McCall Limited. In the courts, a 26-year-old security guard was today charged and granted bail in the sum of $150,000 in relation to an allegation of rape committed on a 14-year-old girl. The security guard, Esmond Adams of Princess Street, Worthmanville, appeared before the chief magistrate and was not required to enter a plea to the entitlement charge which stated that between the 1st and 31st of December 2018 at Princess and Adelaide Street, he engaged in a sexual penetration with a child under the age of 16. After making his first court appearance, he was granted bail and ordered to return to court on the 25th of February. The man was reportedly friends with a young girl and not only engaged in sexual activity with her, but also encouraged her to move away from her home. The girl was reportedly rescued by her father and a complaint was filed. The man managed to dodge an initial arrest at the time of the incident, but was recently apprehended and officially charged. Across the region is coming up next. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever wear that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one. 
to live right. Hi, I'm Andrea Farnham and I'm from Maburumo, Region 1. I have been attending this college for the past month. It is a one-year course. This is actually the fourth batch of students. I'm part of the fourth set of children that have passed through this college. So this opportunity that it has presented, this college has presented, where they train us to be better public servants is something that I see will be beneficial in my life, not only professional-wise, but personally. This is a wonderful initiative by the Ministry of Presidency that enables us, myself and my peers, to grow professionally. Yeah. I'm David Granger and I approve this message. Voting by proxy. Any voter who is unable to personally vote on election day can apply to vote by proxy, providing that he or she would be on duty because he or she is a member of the disciplined services, connected with the election as assigned by the returning officer, engaged in the running of a vessel for the Transport and Harbors Department on elections day, a duly appointed candidate at the election, and would be away from where he or she is registered to vote on election day. Voters who are blind or otherwise physically incapacitated can also vote by proxy. Application to vote by proxy can be uplifted from the returning officer for the electoral district in which the application is being made from the 14th to the 21st of February 2020. Applications must be submitted to the returning officer no later than the 21st of February 2020. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779 or 223-9653. Visit the GCOM website at gcom.org.gy. Email pro at gcom.org.gy gcom.org.gy or visit the nearest GCOM office. Things really moving fast in Guyana and we all got to keep up. In 2015, I didn't even get to vote because I was in the bush. And my boss demanded everything to make sure I couldn't come out in time for election day. I couldn't even get somebody who bought me a proxy. This year, I take in charge. I am voting because it is my right, and I want to have my say for Guyana's future. March 2nd, I am ready. I'm David Granger, and I approve this message. That was a paid political ad. Across the region right now, Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau has cancelled the trip to Barbados as Indigenous demonstrators and their supporters continue to halt train service across parts of Canada. Trudeau planned to bring his pitch for a UN Security Council seat to a two-day gathering of leaders from across the Caribbean, but he will now send his Foreign Affairs Minister instead. Trudeau returned to Canada late Friday after spending a week in Ethiopia, Kuwait, Senegal and Germany, and he spent the weekend in private meetings according to his public schedule. In Trinidad and Tobago, the education minister there, Anthony Garcia, says students need to be encouraged to spend time away from computer screens and be encouraged to play. Mr. Garcia made the comment as his ministry issued a warning last Saturday about a dangerous internet game challenge that is increasing in popularity at schools across Trinidad and Tobago. In the statement, the ministry described the jump trip challenge as one in which three individuals in a line attempt to jump, but the unsuspecting middle person is tripped. The challenge, also referred to as the tripping jump challenge or the skull breaker challenge, has already resulted in one student sustaining a broken arm. Parents and teachers have asked to quell any attempts to have the activity started in their schools. And finally, tonight international news. Two planes carrying hundreds of U.S. citizens from a coronavirus-hit cruise ship in Japan have arrived in the U.S. One plane landed at the U.S. Air Force Base in California and the other in Texas. Passengers will now be isolated at military facilities for 14 days. There were about 400 Americans on board the Diamond Princess. The ship with some 3,700 passengers and crew has been in quarantine since the 3rd of February. Meanwhile, China reported 2,048 new cases of the coronavirus today. Of those new cases, 1,933 were from the Hubei province, the epicenter of the outbreak. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting. <laughs>